Let's look at some more advanced recording options. Let's start with punch recording. Punch recording is a technique that allows you to overwrite a certain section of a recording during playback, while not touching the recording before and after that section. So while playing back, you punch in to record, and then you punch out to stop recording. So you have the option of selecting between two punch recording modes. We have quick punching and auto punch. Let's start with quick punching, which is also known as punching in on the fly. So let's say that you have the perfect take, except for one small mistake. Quick punching allows you to create an alternate take on that section that you want. And the way it works is that I will have my track playing back, and as soon as I press R, as in Romeo, it will start recording from that spot until I press stop. And the way it works is that from the moment you start playback, Logic also starts recording in the background. That way, when you do press R, there will be no audible gaps during that process. By default, quick punching will be on, and it is recommended that you always leave it on. Turn it off, right click here on the recording button, and it's this one, allow quick punching. I'm going to turn it back on. Only turn quick punching off if you have a huge amount of tracks that you are simultaneously recording to and your hard drive cannot handle it, or if you are recording more than the number of available channel strips in a brand new project that's 128 tracks. So uh, let's try it. I have this example here and I've played a wrong note on purpose, so let's have a listen. So the wrong note is right at the beginning of bar 8, and I don't want to record the whole thing, just a small section, because that's the only wrong note here. So let's say I'm going to start playback from bar 3, and somewhere between bar 8 I will have to press R. Very very important, arm record your track, otherwise there will be an audible gap, and we don't want that. Ok, let's try it. That's it, and that will create a take folder, which you know everything about from the previous videos. And we'll need to do some editing here, so let's listen back and spot the problem. Let's start from here. Let me solo it so you can hear it better. That is not a good edit point, it's not smooth, but that is not a problem. So I have said, as I have said, when quick punching is enabled, recording starts from the moment playback starts. And we have started playback from bar 3. So we are in quick swipe combing now, so I can't edit the take, so I can't grab this one and move it. So I'm going to change to editing mode, let's actually zoom in a bit. And now I can edit it, so I'm going to grab it and move it to a better editing point. Let's Let's go with this note here. Let's go all the way, that's fine. I'm going to turn back to quick swipe combing, zoom in, and then get this one all the way to the beginning of that note. So that looks good. Let's have a listen now. That's it, perfect. Now let's command Z that and try the auto punch now. But before I do that, I need to mention that when you start playback from wherever you started, start playing the part so that you are also recording that section in case you need a better editing point. So let's command Z and go back to that one. Yep. Now let's try auto punch. Exactly the same principle as quick punching. The only difference is that I will have to manually set my auto punch range. 
So right click on the control bar, customize control bar and display and select auto punts and set punts in and out. Now when you click on this little icon here, a red bar will appear right below the cycle range. It behaves exactly like the cycle bar. I can grab the edges, make it bigger, smaller, whatever, or I can grab the whole thing and just move it around. Or I can use my punts in and punts out buttons up here to set my range. So I want to start recording from bar 6 again, so I'll place my locator there, put punts in, and I want to stop recording at bar 10. So I'm, to, I'm going to place my bar, th my playhead there, and go to punts out. So that's my section, I'm going to remove the cycle, the loop. So what will happen is I will go to bar 3, I will start recording from here by pressing this or R. It won't record anything until bar 6, and then as soon as it gets to this red bar, it will record for that section. So let's try it. Arm to record, okay, let's go. And as before, it creates a take. So a take folder. Let's have a listen. One more thing that I need to mention. If you have this on a loop, and then you have the uh, auto punch on, what will happen is that the first time it, would, it will actually record for this section and then it will loop, but then the second time it will not record anything on the second pass. So this does not work as cycle recording. If you want to do that, you need to use the cycle recording method we have looked at. I think it was video 21. Okay, that's it. So uh, the video is over. But for those that might be wondering what happens if auto punts is not enabled and you punt in something on the fly, I will quickly show you. So I'm going to Command Z that, remove that, remove that. So let's deactivate allow quick punts in. And let's start anywhere, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to start from here. That was my mistake. I will start playback. That's exactly what happens. There is an audible gap when this is off. And this is the exact same thing that happens if you do have quick punts enabled, but you have not arm record your track it, and it's just on the focus. So take care to avoid that.